Hi everyone, welcome to this new session of CFA Level 2. Today we'll be starting with a new topic altogether, fixed income. Now, before we get into the first reading, I do want to clarify some of the basic things about fixed income. There is a perception often amongst the students that this is one of the tougher topics. There are two things about this topic. Fixed income is a technical topic. You will come across a lot of new terms, relations between a lot of concepts that are going to be technical. But technical and difficult are two separate things. My responsibility here is to make sure that fixed income does not feel tough. It is technical, that is by design, I cannot change that, but it will not feel tough. So one thing that is going to be very important in fixed income is that from your CFA Institute's perspective, they often keep fixed income and equity sort of at equal importance. Most of the time, the weightages of the two are also very similar in your exam. But the good thing for you is equity had very big readings and it had eight readings in total. Fixed income only has five. And these are five relatively smaller readings. So as such, the volume of syllabus in fixed income is less. So from scoring perspective in exam, fixed income is more efficient than equity. You will have to put less time into reading fixed income than you would in reading equity. But that doesn't mean you take it way too easy. As I said, it is still a technical topic. You will come across a lot of new concepts. The key thing about fixed income is that every small concept is relevant because in that smaller volume of syllabus, you're still getting almost similar weightage to equity, which means every small thing can be asked in the exam. So you have to pay more attention to small nuances. My suggestion would be the first two readings from the base. So first reading is talking squarely about term structure and interest rate dynamics. And second reading is introducing you to the binomial valuation models. Both of them are extremely crucial to being comfortable with your fixed income curriculum. The same way that in quants, the linear regression and the basics of multiple regression, they were the key to understanding everything. Same way in fixed income, understanding interest rate dynamics and the binomial model, that is the key to cracking the entire fixed income curriculum. So with all of the discussion about fixed income out of the way, Let's start with the reading we have for today, which is term structure and interest rate dynamics. Now, this chapter is squarely focused on interest rates. And there is one very specific reason why. At level one, when you did valuations, your primary focus was on YTM, yield to maturity, which is basically the return an investor would get if he holds the bond till its maturity. Now, as a starting point, the concept of YTM is very good to understand how the valuation of bond works. But in reality, not every investor is investing in bonds to hold it till maturity, first point. Second point, every bond will have its own YTM, which means that if I'm analyzing 50 different securities, 50 different fixed income securities, I'll have to first focus on YTM of each of them. And given that bonds universe is so diverse, it becomes very tough to practically analyze in proper detail what the valuation of a security should be. For that reason, we need a focus on interest rates, specifically what interest rates are prevailing in the market. Two reasons why interest rates are better than YTM. First, from the investor's perspective, the bond might be of 20 years, but I'm only investing for four. So for me, the opportunity cost of investing in the bond. So if I don't invest in the bond, I would have put the money somewhere else for four years. Ideally, I should be using that instead of the YTM because YTM is for the entire maturity, which is not a valid opportunity cost. And from the portfolio manager or investment advisor's perspective, YTM for each security is different. But when the central bank changes its policy rates, it affects the interest rates in the entire market. That allows me to easily identify whether the interest rate movement is adverse to my security valuations or is it in favor of my security valuations. So for that very reason, the focus at level two is going to shift on interest rate dynamics, various interest rates that we can use to see whether the bonds are going to get some benefit or some sort of uh, depreciation in value or even understanding how the various interest rates interact. And the second part of this reading name is term structure. Term structure is just interest rates 
for different maturities. So if I have bond for two years, for three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, what are the interest rates that would be relevant for these securities of different maturity levels? So if I have different maturities and I am comparing interest rates across those maturities, together that is known as term structure. So we'll be talking about how interest rate works, how different interest rates interact with each other, and also the term structure and the impact this can have on the valuation of different kinds of security. Longer term interest rates would affect long term bonds more. Short term interest rates would affect short term bonds more. Let's start with the first portion, which is intro. And in the introduction part, we'll mostly be looking at level one recap. The first topic that we have to recap from level one is spot rates. These are rates as of today or rates existing on any particular date. So if I talk about investing in a security today for four years, that interest rate is called a spot rate. So whatever investment opportunities you have available right now, the interest rates on those are known as spot rates. So effectively, spot rate simply means it's going to start right now. It can be for one year, it can be for two years, five years, 10 years, 100 years, but it's starting right now. That is the key about spot rates. Now spot rates, in order to connect it with fixed income, these can also be thought of as yield, on zero coupon bonds. So effectively, if you bought a zero coupon bond right now, which is going to mature in four years, the yield that that bond is going to return is effectively the spot rate for four years. Of course, spot rates and zero coupon bonds, these work same, but the moment you introduce coupon, then my YTM has an influence of those recurring income as well as capital gains. So that affects two different kinds of payments. But the crux is, if you're comfortable with the definition of spot rate as it is, it is just an interest rate starting for an investment today. You can be happy with that. But at certain points in your syllabus, they have compared it with zero coupon bonds. Just be familiar with the terminologies because YTM of a zero coupon bond provided that zero one bond is starting today is same as the spot rate for that particular maturity. So if today a company issues a five year zero one bond, the YTM on that is going to be five years spot rate. So effectively, that is the relation. You need to be comfortable with both terminologies. For the meaning, the first one is good enough, but often when you read the curriculum or any other study material, you will find these used interchangeably. So thus, just for that clarification, I have put this here. Now at level one, we did have a concept of valuation of fixed income securities using spot rates. Now, normally how we do valuation is you are given coupon and some maturity value. You are given a discount rate, uh, specifically the YTM. And you are also given the maturity for which the bond would stay. And then you would just use your TVM calculations in your calculator and you'll get your present value, which would be the ideal value that the bond should have as of now. The difference in case of spot rates is fairly simple. Let's take an example. So you have a 4% three year bond with par value of $100. Calculate P0 if spot rates are as follows. So normally at level one, most of the questions instead of giving you spot rate would just give you calculate P0 if YTM is a certain percentage. This time, Instead of YTM, we'll have spot rates. So let's have a look at the spot rates. You have one year spot rate as, let's take it at 3%. Two year spot rate is 
4% and 3 year spot rate is 6%. These rates simply mean that today if I invest in a security for 1 year, it would give me a return of 3%. Today if I invest in a security for 2 years, it would give me 4% per annum. All of these rates are always per annum, which means I'll get 4% every year for the next 2 years. Then if I invest in a security today, which matures in 3 years, it would give me a per annum return of 6%. Now, aside from this, the valuation technique is exact same thing that you have done a million times from time value of money. All the future cash flows discounted with the relevant rate. Now, at level 1, that relevant rate was same. It was YTM. Over here, we'll have relevant rate as spot rate. So, first year cash flows would be discounted with the first year spot rate. Second year cash flows would be dis uh, discounted by two year spot rates and third year cash flows with three year spot rates. Let's look at the solution. So in order to do the valuation, I have 4% coupon on a power of 100. So first year I'm going to receive 4. This is first year's cash flow. I discount it using the spot rate for first year. Second year again, I learn a coupon of 4. But this time I'll discount it using spot rate for two years. So this would be 1.04 square. Now square is very important because at the end of the day these are per annum rates. This is a two year spot rate which means you are investing for two years. So you have to discount it for two years. This 4% is always per annum. Plus at the end of third year you will receive the third year's coupon plus you will also get your 100 back. So 104 divided by 1.06 to the power 3. So at level 1, instead of having different discount rates, you used to have one single rate and you used to do same process. The only difference is that with this equation, you won't be able to solve it in one go in the calculator. You'll have to calculate three values separately and then add them up manually. So give it a try. So when you solve for this, you'll get a value 94.90 approximately. So I hope this is clear. This is something that was introduced briefly at your level 1 curriculum itself. So this is just a recap from level 1 at how we can use spot rates for valuation of fixed income securities. The next topic we have to recap from level 1 is the forward rates, how we can use them for valuation and how they interact with the spot rates. Let's look at that.